Julian, emerging markets have suffered a bit of late due to the strong US dollar. Do you think this is going to continue or do you think that there are various parts of the market that are still doing well anyway? I think in the short term, there is a bit of pressure, as you said, because of the dollar. Um, the long term outlook for emerging markets is very good. And it's only really a question of, of timing um, when they're going to be bottom. If you're worried about the, the short term timing, then obviously you should probably hold off a little bit. But uh, otherwise, I think it's a very good entry point to be getting into emerging markets. You've got a group of countries which represent over half the world's economy, uh, growing at 5% plus per annum. Um, you've got compound earnings growth of, of double digits, you know, low teens at the moment, and you've got a price earnings ratio of, of 11 times, which is a, an unusually attractive entry point for the asset class. So I think if you, unless you, you're very um, optimistic on the dollar, in other words, you think the dollar's going to go a lot stronger, um, and I think the, the, the best part of the dollar rise is probably past us, uh, then I think it's probably a good time to be getting into emerging markets. And how is the dividend culture changing in emerging markets? It's evolved quite a lot over the last uh, 10 years or so. So if you look over the last decade, you'd have almost trebled your money in emerging markets. And of that return, an increasing component of that has come from dividends. So specifically over the last 10 years, about a quarter of your return investing in emerging markets has come from dividends. And what effectively has happened is that as, com as companies have become uh, more mature, as the growth rate has slowed from the sort of 7-8% growth to the closer to 5% growth uh, levels you are at, at, at the moment. Companies are needing to invest less for, to, to fund their future growth and instead are choosing to pay back an increasing proportion of that back to, to shareholders in terms of dividends. So in other words, the, these companies are looking a little bit more like the, 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 the growth companies in the West. So, so what you have in emerging markets is a group of companies that are still growing at a reasonable rate because if you think about it, you've got 5% economic growth, you've probably got 2 or 3% inflation, so you've got in, in nominal terms, you've got, you've got roughly 8% growth, uh, and then you've got a bit of uh, operational leverage from the, from, from the company, so you've got low teens um, earnings growth or, or mid teens earnings growth. So, so these are still reasonably healthily growing businesses, but nonetheless, they're paying, is, is they're, they're both div uh, in continuing to invest in the future of the business, but they're also increasingly paying money back to shareholders. So if you take Samsung Electronics, which is one of the biggest and certainly the most famous emerging market company for, for, for Western investors, their dividend has increased every year for the last six years, so they're paying 110 won uh, for, uh, for dividends in 2011. Uh, last year they paid uh, over 1,500 won, so they almost uh, over 10 times as much uh, dividends to, to, to shareholders. So, and that's probably an extreme example, but nonetheless, it's a show, it's a sign that the dividend culture in, in, in emerging markets has evolved fairly rapidly over the last decade. And in which companies or sectors or countries are you finding the best opportunities at the moment? We're seeing opportunities across the emerging world at the moment, actually. Um, obviously, Asia is becoming more and more important. The Asian economies are growing at a faster rate than those of Latin America, Eastern Europe, Middle East, Africa, and so on. So uh, Asia is, is probably three quarters of our opportunity set is, is, is in Asia. Notably, of course, China and, uh, and India. These are the two giants in the emerging uh, world. Both of them are rapidly growing economies. China is growing at over 6% per annum. India, which is, a, of course, a, a poorer country, therefore coming from a lower uh, per capita income basis, is growing at an even higher rate. So, so certainly those would be two areas that, that, we, that we look at in particular. Um, within the, the, uh, the terms of sectors, in terms of the opportunity sets, uh, we believe if you've got if you've got these, these, these economies that are growing at 5 plus percent per annum, you want to be closer to the consumer. You want to be closer to the, the, the types of things that, that the average person in China, in India, in Brazil, in Mexico, in, in, uh, in, in wherever it is in, in Eastern Europe, uh, what, where, they, where they're going to be spending their money. Um, but also you, look, you need to be looking at companies which can benefit from that with, with high and sustainable um, profit margins. So we, we like things like uh, airports, for example, as people travel. We, lo we like things like insurance companies. We like things like uh, some of the technology businesses, for example. So there's a, there's a whole raft of sort of consume, broadly speaking, consumer-facing, domestic demand-facing businesses uh, where we find the best opportunities. And when it comes to trade wars and what's going on in the US at the moment, will that have a significant impact on emerging markets, do you think? Or as you're investing in more domestically facing businesses, do you think actually the impact will be less than people may expect? I think what's going on with trade policy from Washington is one of the reasons why the US dollar is so strong mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's effectively accentuating what was an existing existing trend. Um, in the short term, this means that fewer people are wanting to buy emerging markets. In the longer term, of course, it means that these economies are actually more competitive than they were because their, their, their currencies are somewhat cheaper. But 
certainly um, it accentuates, I think, the move towards domestic demand. It means that these economies, uh, and, they, and they are trading a lot more with, them, with themselves. So if you go back a, a, a 15 years or so, um, trade between other between emerging economies accounted for only about 25% of, of, of world trade. Trade between emerging markets now is accounted for about 40% of world trade, and that and that percentage is is is, is going to grow over time. So. The, the U.S., of course, is still very important, uh, and these trade wars, I think, as much as anything else, because you haven't had a, a situation like this for probably 70 or 80 years in, mm. in, in economic history, uh, they are a big question, Mark, but I think that uh, it, it, it almost uh, reinforces our view that you want to be closer to the, to the domestic consumer and find out really what's going on in, the, in these domestic economies, uh, rather than having a, a, a portfolio which is focused on on, on uh, businesses that may lose out from, from what's going on on the trade side. Thank you very much. Pleasure.